Observation. Every man his own university. There is no book, manual or teacher that can replace the great skill of observation. Through the power of observation we can learn directly from the musical terrain. Thanks to observation we can go in search of those details that only those who are determined to observe can find. Russell Conwell, my great teacher and inspired, taught me through his extraordinary book Observation, Every Man, His Own University, how each of us has within us the greatest university in the world, which is not made up of books, teachers or exams, but from the so simple and so neglected ability of observation. For this reason, following the example of Russell and in honor of him, for this video I want to share with you my musical observations and what we can learn from each composition. In this video, in fact, we analyze a composition, note the most significant aspects and break it down into details. Then you can download the PDF with the notes, analysis and indications from the link you find in the description of the related post on Patreon. Thanks to your small but very precious contribution, you can have the access to exclusive content such as many PDFs and videos of improvisation elements. Also, you will have me create several videos like this for you, which are helpful for many musicians from all over the world, especially for those who are new to this magnificent art. So prepare your observation well and drive with me in this video to find out what we can learn from Walter Achegot vom Himmel sei der Rhein. First of all, let's play the choral, the melody. Nice, and now let's pass to play the composition. Nice. 
Now, as, you, as we can see, we have two melodies. So it means that this is a bicinium. We have a third melody only at the end of this composition in from this point. But this is a bicinium. So we have two voices, one in the left hand, that is like a cello. In fact, we can recognize elements and styles movement of, of the voice like the cello on this point. A basso continuo. And the other voice here plays an ornamentation of the choral. So, first of all, we have to um, find the elements, the melodic elements that are strictly correlated to the melody of the choral. As we can see, we have the beginning of this composition. That is the choral, but also and then we have a continuation with the cadence of the cello. So we have at the beginning the, an imitation im of the choral. Okay. base of the cello, the upper voice responds to the bass, beginning, starting with the same beginning, so the melody, and as we can see we don't have any more the continuation that is here for the cadence because in, on this point we don't need a cadence, okay? but we have like a strict canon in this point okay an important thing we can learn from this point is recognize the unprepared distances from the structural nose we have this figuration we have this note that is an appoggiatura, so let's write in green, appoggiatura, AP, and this other note that is an anticipation. In fact, the melody of the choral is So, and now we have again the melody of the chorale in this point. Okay, also in this point we have appoggiatura and anticipation. And now the cadence in the left hand and the right hand repeats again the chorale, the first phrase of the chorale, in this way, so, here, and we can see how the melody continuing with the choral so sol fa mi re the melody is dun fa mi re sol fa mi re two times so is okay the other notes are appoggiaturas or passing tones or other unprepared dissonances we have five kinds of unprepared dissonances they are appoggiaturas passing tones 
um, escape tones, anticipations, and the last one is uh, oh my god, where is now? I don't remember. Um, passing tones, appoggiaturas, anticipations, and escape tones, and neighbor tones. Exactly. Now I'll make another video about these five these five kinds of unprepared dissonances. Now, if we look at the structural notes. We can see that they are always consonances. Th so six, three, then we have this, that is three, three, five, okay, this is not a structural note, but it is in consonants. Then five, this is an anticipation of the next. Five, six, three, three, five, Six, three, three, five, and here in the left hand we have the imitation. Of the next choral melody in the right hand, so as you can see also in this point we have six, six again and six, the pattern of parallel six with anticipations, these are anticipations and the same happens here with the inversion of six that are thirds, three, three and three and on this point we have anticipations and, and, and anticipations in this way and the second time for more variety and not having the same thing for the concept or variety we have this okay but an octave higher so six six and six Again, this pattern that is the second phrase of the choral with the cadence. So we have also at this point anticipation, anticipation. Okay, the okay in this case we don't have. This is actually a passing tone because because we are going to a cadence we don't have anymore as we had before in this point for example okay so cadence and here we don't have the melody actually of the choral but we can recognize yeah, we can recognize the four, the descending tetrachord that is the end of the second measure. Yeah, exactly. So we have also at this point the melody of the choral. Now, let's play again the first part. Now let's circle here the nose of the Melody. Okay. And 
now we have the refrain because the first, the first phrase of the chorale is repeated again. Okay, now let's go on to the second part of this chorale. This actually is the melody of the chorale, that is... So we can recognize also in this point G sol la fa mi thinking in solmization mi fa sol fa mi re mi fa sol la all this melody with ornamentation before cadence in the style of basso continuo or cello and now the melody okay and then we have again the melody part that is the beginning of this melody is like if the the voice wants to start want to um, join the game in this case the lower voice responds to the upper voice in this point but actually the real melody of the chorale starts after the imitation of the bass What other intervals and the consonances used? Three, 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 and three. Parallel thirds pattern. And then here, parallel sixth. Six, 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 six. If you, you master the use of parallel third and sixth, that is really simple, you can really. Um, play and improvise and compose a lot of music because in a lot of passages in baroque music we have parallel thirds or parallel six as we can see in this point so three 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 okay this la sol fa sol la is structurally similar to this point Again, six, six, six. Again, six, and then five and three. Because six, five, three, th that is what in three, at least three voices becomes the compound cadence, okay? Now, another thing. Um, let's individuate the structure of this passage. So we had the entry of the chorale in this point. The false entry. Then, so it is like if we have a three, 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 okay? Then six, 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 five, three. Structure and upon the structures, uh, Walter composes composed this beautiful ornamentation. So we have here what we can call false entry. I don't know if there is a specific name in German for this kind of pattern. If you know it, write in the comments of this video. And this melody 
is on has an ornamentation that bring, that takes us to the up to the upper, upper point and I think that our effect our perceptions of going up is thanks to the points where he put these beautiful trills or mordants that are uh, embellishments. Exactly in the ascending tetrachord. Now, let's see, let's read the bass. This point is without doubt an imitation of the melody of the chorale. Followed by the cadence that we can find in all this composition in this piece, like uh, this point, this point, like for example, uh, uh, let me check this point. We have here a cadence again in the bass. And then also in this point, and then also in this point. And on the last note of the cadence, we have the melody of the chorale. So the chorale was. Now we have. So let's find first of all the notes of the melody. So we have G, F sharp, and G. Right? Then we have this. So G, B, A. If we look at this melody, we don't find the first A. So in the chorale, wants here an A, uh, right? Yeah, because we have G. No, sorry. So the melody is. Yeah. So. A, G, and B. This. Exactly. We can think that at the place of this A, for heavy, for not having the perfect consonants, the fifth, and in this way, having this passage, but because probably Walter at this point wanted the imperfect third. sweet than a perfect consonance and also for having this accent probably he decided to put the um, third in the place of the fifth and also in this point we can recognize how the bass moves with parallel sixth yeah six 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 and sixth Imitation of this melody. And cadence. So cadence. Perfect. Now let's play again this part. Okay, we 
can see that that the base like cell is starting the game we have this fifth leap that is that comes from the melody of the choral that is G D B then we have C D C then we have B and A and the chorals finishes on this A because this is in um, in, in, in a frigid in the frigid mode you can see the continuation that is the same pattern and then the, this one and then with this little connect conjunction between the two patterns that are the same melody and then the cadence so cadence and now the upper voice start the game join the game with the choral these are the notes of our choral so G D B then C D C, B, and A. Now, the lower voice, the cello, join again the game, and we have three parallel thirds pattern, three, three, three. And the continuation again of this, of this pattern, in this point so okay and then we have the conclusion that is a repetition of the last phrase with three voices that works like the petit reprise so case the melody is not um, and with um, the melody doesn't have embellishments so we can recognize clearly the last phrase of our choral and this choral finishes on the on the fifth degree of G minor if we look at this key as G minor but it is not actually correct because this is a modal choral and as you, as you know, or if you don't know, I tell you, the Phrygian cadence we can see, we can have in G minor, or in every minor key is on the fifth degree of this key. In this way, we have even G minor, the fifth degree is D. So, and this is the reason why this piece that is in G minor finishes on what we call today um, the dominant, the cadence of the dominant. Actually, this is the Phrygian cadence in G minor because the melody of this choral is in the Phrygian mode, in this case transposed a fourth up. E A fourth up. So let's analyze the bass now. We can see this patterns typical of the cello and the basso continuum and at the end this figuration with a lot of neighbor notes we write with N we indicate with N okay And with this figuration, we have the melody of the choral. In this way. Okay, perfect. Now, let's play this choral from the beginning and 
Now we can listen and play this choral with more awareness thanks to all the elements we have been recognizing together. Let's add, okay, so, yeah, let's add maybe, maybe a, a flute. With my work and my videos, I want to make composition and improvisation and art accessible to everyone. Because it's important to know how the music we play has been composed, discover all the exclusive premium content for mastering this art. Join my Patreon page and start your journey. If you have been watching this video up to the end, I bet you too are fascinated by the world of partimenti, improvisation and historical composition. For us musicians of the 21st century, it's important and fundamental to know these techniques and the way in which the great master of the past used them artfully to compose the extraordinary music we play today. If you master these patterns, you can better understand and interpret what you play. You can compose new music based on these patterns and you can improvise new music from scratch because you know the grammar of this musical language. For that I created Improvisation Elements, a set of several improvisation exercise videos for each of which you can download a PDF to practice whenever you want. Improvisation Elements is an ambitious project and is reserved for those who support my work on Patreon. Every week I upload new improvisation elements videos on different topics, sequences, scales, cadences and more. All these videos are organized at the following page. So now subscribe a membership on Patreon, choose the exercise you want to practice and become an improviser.